Everybody, welcome to my channel just keep swimming 1111 I am going to do for you today a karmic reading I just wanted to make it quick I didn't have a lot of time um, but this was something that I was feeling is pretty important as I feel a lot of you guys are going through towers a lot of you guys are going through big changes walking away going through karmic lessons um, learning to stand up for yourself drawing boundaries, sticking to them, seeing the truth. And to be honest, with um, Uranus in retrograde, um, I just really feel like now is an imperative time that we realize the fantasies, the illusions are coming to the light. So it's just like reality's here. It's, it's here in front of us. We can't deny it. It is what it is. And what better time to figure out what's going on in the karmic truth than right now just diving into the cards. Now, I've already pre-shuffled these, so I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I wanted to save some time on the video since I am uh, having to upload this. So you guys know I always shuffle, but I wanted to have these out so it wouldn't be so long and such a daunting video. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, right now, I have what are uh, the karmic's thinking right now what's going on in the karmic mind what's going on in the karmic feelings what is the desires and the challenges for the karmics um what seems to be the reaction from your dm or df in regards to the karmics this is the reactions and what seems to be the outcome here and these were just additional, they kind of flew out, so I'm just gonna keep them there, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a message from your person, whoever you're watching, whoever you're cross-watching for, uh, this is your person, whoever's in the karmic relationship. We wanna get a message from them first. So I'm gonna dive in with my divine messages from the Divine Masculine and see what's being said. The first message, Spirit is helping me. So they're being challenged. They're not alone. They may feel alone, but they are definitely not alone. They definitely have assistance from the other side. I am restless and anxious. So your person is just, I, I don't think they can sit still. I think the person you're watching for is unable to function on a daily basis normally. I think that they have anxiety, stress, ulcers, headaches, um, constant thoughts, constant thinking about the situation that fell apart. And I honestly feel like they feel like the ball's going to drop. The tower's going to fall at any moment. They just, I think they really know that karma is coming for them. I'm seeing my toxic patterns. So right off the bat, they're like, I did a bad thing. I'm, I'm in a terrible karmic toxic situation. I did it again. I chose this again. I'm sorry. I keep doing the same crap. I'm starting to see my patterns, which are extremely toxic to you, to me, and to the karmic partner. I'm healing, and it's painful. And I really feel this is true. I feel like what they're going through right now is extremely painful. Um, sometimes I honestly feel like they don't want to. They don't want to face it. They don't really want to deal with what's painful um, and they're healing so it's a recovery but it's extremely difficult and sometimes they reject this sometimes they don't want to heal because it hurts and they've been through a lot of pain and it's just like they're kind of used to it they're kind of numb into the pain 
So even though they're healing, they're just like, this sucks. You know, having to hit this head on and deal with my toxic patterns and look back at the past, Mercury retrograde, look back at the decisions I've made, it really hurts me to look at it. It hurts me to see what I've done. Those toxic patterns are not easy for me to address nor look at. My karmic situation is ending. So they want you to know from a higher dimension perspective, the karmic situation that they, they're in or whoever they chose that is karmic, it is coming to an end. Now, maybe you're the one who chose the karmic situation. That's up to you. Remember, karmic relationships can be reversed. Any relationship can be reversed. This karmic reading can be for a divine feminine with a karmic or a divine masculine with a karmic. But whoever is chosen to be in the karmic situation, you're admitting and seeing now from a higher perspective that this karmic situation is not going to last, guys. It's not long term. It's not going to last. It is ending. Whether you're in denial or not, that's up to you. Whether you know it or not, that's up to you. The point is, it's not going to last, period. So yeah, karmic situation is definitely over or ending, okay? The next one is, I'm sorry I hurt you. So another higher message, you know, they're just really sorry. They did not mean to hurt you. They didn't want to hurt you. I don't think that was their intention. I think it was more of a self-preservation, more of a save my own ass kind of thing than a, I'm going to go at you and hurt you kind of thing. And I think they feel really bad that you got hurt in the crossfire of their karmic lessons. And they feel a lot of guilt and a lot of shame from that. Oh, well, I was in denial. So whoever's in the karmic situation, yeah, you're in denial or you were, was, past tense. It doesn't mean you are. You were in denial. Maybe some of them still are, but the point is denial is what the problem is here. Um, some of these people thought this was okay. This was good for them. They were going to be able to get through it. It wasn't so bad. You know, they were telling themselves all kinds of candy-coated little ideas to stay more comfortable in the karmic situation. Maybe it was children, maybe it was money. Um, maybe it was just comfort. Maybe they were comfortable in their own discomfort. Whatever it was, they're realizing now, or you're realizing now, I was in denial. It was a mistake. You're finally seeing it was a mistake. The next one is, I feel heartache. Three swords. A lot of pain, a lot of heartache. Um, there's just no comfort here. There's no rest. There's no sleep. There's no comfort. There's no feel-good feelings. This is just one of those things where it's day in and day out. It's painful. Day in and day out, whether you're healing or not healing, you're feeling bad. So whoever has chosen this karmic path, it's not for the weak. <laughs> you're going to feel bad. You're going to feel the pain and the sting of karma. Does everyone have karma? Yes. Can you pick and choose your karma? Not really, but you do have choices and you should know if you've been even slightly awakened that whatever you send out is going to come back to you threefold. So you should be aware. Whether it's fear, love, hate, mercy, all of the above, whatever you're sending out is going to come back three times as hard. So let's go ahead and reveal, let me get a drink, what's going on in these um, thoughts of the karmic. Oh my god, wow. First card out of the gate. The karmic is certainly thinking there's a tower coming or they're in one. They feel it, they know it, it's coming, they're well aware. This is over, shocking destruction. I think there's some shocking truth, revelations, everything being unveiled. There's a lot of secrets that were kept that are coming out in the open. This is an ending of a relationship, by the way. Usually there's two people falling out of the tower, struck by lightning. It's usually the ending of a relationship or some kind of a commitment, some kind of a process. It's over. Um, it could also be that the karmic person is thinking it is over. Uh, they're also realizing, you know, this relationship has run its course. It's gotten to the point where we both know it, it's not going to go any further than here. It, it's not. We're either going to stay stuck in madness or we're going to get out of this. But either way, it's a feeling of pain. 
because it hurts to know that. It hurts to know the truth. We have the Seven of Swords, so we have secrets. Secrets about the denials, secrets from the Twin Flame, Divine Soulmate, Divine Partner. Um, they've been running from this. The karmic person doesn't want to see this. The karmic partner is not aware that there's such a divine relationship out there. Um, they also have love and happiness. I'm not saying karmic people are meant to have misery and negativity. I'm saying when you're in a karmic relationship, you're meant to learn the most painful, difficult lessons of your time. It's not for the weak. It is not cupcakes and rainbows. It is difficult lessons. Lessons of rejection. Lessons of secrets. Lessons of disrespect. Lessons of betrayal. Lessons of toxic any kind of shape, form, or fashion, okay? And here's the deal. The karmic person or the person with the karmic person is running. Seven of swords, escape. Look how she's trying to run up those stairs. She's trying to escape from some monster, from some terror. She feels like she's running from something terrifying to escape for her own safety. Uh, the karmic is avoiding, okay? This is an avoidance. The karmic is avoiding the truth avoiding what this tower is trying to bring uh, maybe even trying to escape the tower to be quite honest oh and here's death the end is here the end is here it's time it's over i'm sorry i'm sorry you know if there's a karmic watching hey i love you but this is a very difficult lesson you've just been shown some kind of truth and you know that it's over you know it's time this right here is, I know it's time. It's been a while, it's been a good while, and I know that this was coming. And I've been trying to escape death. I've been trying to escape the tower. I've been trying to escape what spirit's been trying to show us both in this karmic lesson. In essence, I've been trying to avoid the karmic lesson, period. Because I know once the lesson is learned, my time is up with this person. Um, and that's what a lot of karmic struggle with, to be honest. A lot of karmic relationships struggle with the ending. Because once the lesson's been learned and the truth is revealed and you're sitting in honesty, there's no reason to hang around anymore. That's it. It's over. The end is here. That's it. How are they feeling about this whole thing? Because this is what they know. They know. They know they're trying to run. They know they're trying to escape. What are they feeling about it? Wow. Oh my gosh, we have the devil card. Okay, that's creepy. Um, soul torment. They feel completely saddened, hurt, angry, stuck, tormented that this relationship has to end. I almost feel like somebody has such a tight grip. They, they don't want to let go. They don't want to let go go they're hanging on so tight it's controlling the natural flow of things it's controlling what's meant to be let go it's obsession and someone here clearly look how this is tim curry from the movie legend the devil um capricorn is definitely here we got capricorn scorpio scorpio on the board just putting that out there um the karmic person or let's just say the person with the karmic is certainly feeling stuck tormented, angry, fearful, maybe even a little out of control. They feel like someone has, you know what they honestly feel like? The divine partner on the outside, a, a third party, is trying to control their relationship. But their relationship is karmic. Their relationship is unhealthy. Why is their relationship unhealthy? Codependency, addictions, obsessions, toxic patterns. We saw it all here, denial. Okay. I'm seeing my toxic patterns. I'm restless and anxious. You know, this tower and death is from spirit. Spirit is helping them get out of the situation, period. They're the ones fighting this. Let's see what else is gonna happen here. Book of Secrets. So again, you know, this is the truth coming out. Is, is it Neptune?
who's in retrograde? I thought it was Uranus, but it could be Neptune and Uranus. If Neptune is in retrograde, I have to double check, guys. I'm really not sure. But it's the energy of fantasy and secrets and hidden things, illusions, delusions, all of that. And it's all coming to the light. There's no more secrets. There's no more illusion. Someone here is really struggling really, really difficultly with how they're going to get out of this because they're keeping secrets like to keep someone tied to them like they're not saying they have another partner they're talking to they're not saying I have an addiction or I have something wrong with me they're trying to put their best foot forward and they're really not trying to tell their secrets their skeletons in the closet but now the light is shining out it's coming out I feel like the karmics have secrets and the truth is coming out My candles are all flickering. I don't know if you guys can see that. The candles with the way the light is. Okay. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh, self-reflection. That's a big one. That is a big one. Self-reflection. Guys, this is serious. Uh, they're supposed to be self-reflecting, but instead, they're keeping secrets. It's, it's like this. The karmic person honestly just realizes, oh, this relationship isn't for me. I'm supposed to separate from this relationship. This is supposed to be over. Um, I need to let go. I see the truth now. But instead of admitting I see the truth now, in their reflection, they're saying, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to keep a secret. I'm going to basically stay wanting to stay stuck in this relationship when my heart really doesn't want to when I really want to leave this karmic relationship. I don't want to lose. They have a lot of competitiveness. A lot of karmic energies are competitive. It's a very ego-driven, this is ego, a very ego-driven attitude, a very ego-driven sense of being. And they don't want to lose or let go to a third party or a divine partner. They want to be in this to win this because they want this person. It's that clutching, that hanging on to. I want this person. You can't have them. They're mine. This is ownership. Ownership. I don't want to release and let go. Even though they've self-reflected and they know the truth. Even though they know that this relationship is not for them and they don't even like who they are in this relationship. Some of you guys just don't even like who you are. You're not happy with this person. You're not satisfied. You don't feel good about yourself. You're not the best version of your best self. You're struggling. You're having a hard time being happy. Um, and even though you've discovered these truths, you're, you're having a real hard time letting go, to be honest. Let's see what else is going on. Bottled up emotions not surprised that's what I'm talking about it's like the secrets are your emotions you're not talking about it you're not saying the truth about it instead of letting this out now this could be the karmic or this could be the person with the karmic but someone here in these karmic relationships are not letting the truth out like I'm gonna keep it all inside I'm gonna hide I'm gonna run I'm, I don't want to look at the tower I don't want to deal with death I'm just gonna be tormented. I'm gonna be suffering in this relationship quietly, secretly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look inside myself all alone, but I'm not gonna tell this person that I know it's over. I'm not gonna share with this person that we're having troubles and I should just let it go and admit that this is not working out. Instead of being honest, cause Seven of Swords and Book of Secrets, I'm sorry. The karmic relationship is full of lies. Lies, deceit, and deceptions. Bottled up emotions. Everything is masked, masked, hidden. Everything is hidden. The karmic relationship is toxic because of this. How can you have a healthy, happy relationship with toxicity of all these emotions and feelings being hidden? How can you even for one second think that any of this is okay? None of it is. Living a lie, guys. Living a lie. I do think someone's going to have to come out of this. I'll get clarifiers for this, but someone's going to have to come out of this. Um, let's see what else is going on. Well, here we go. Right in the middle. Look at that. Right in the middle of the reading, we have karmic partner. This relationship is karmic by nature because there is difficult lessons and toxic patterns that need to be dealt with inside this relationship. They are both masked, or at least this woman is, but it could be both. They're both in costume. 
in dress up for show. This is fake Facebook, fake life, fake happiness, fake, 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 fake. No one here is being honest. If they were to actually just get real and know that the secrets are hidden, this is an explosion waiting to happen. This relationship is going to implode. I mean, what I mean is explode from the inside out. It's only a matter of time before all this bottled up emotions and secrets bubble up to the surface like a volcano. And it's weird because I've been feeling volcanic energy lately. I don't know why. Um, like a week ago, I felt the earthquakes before the very first one even hit. It was like a day before. Um, and now I'm feeling volcanoes, guys. No, no, no bueno. Just saying, if you live somewhere near there, be careful, okay? But it may just be the dreams that I'm having and, and the visions and the feelings are emotions and bottled up toxicity ready to erupt. It could just be that, okay? It could just totally be spiritual. Um, I feel like this is about to happen. Um, sometimes the earth mirror reflects what's going on in 5D. And if we're having earthquakes and floods and tornadoes and hurricanes and deaths and, you know, attacks from animals and, and lava volcanic eruptions and all these things going on, what's going on spiritually? What's going on in our solar system? What's going on with our planets? They're having an eruption of energy. There is a shift and an energy flow. This is a paradigm shift, an energy shift. We're just seeing the results of it here on earth. It's happening in your relationship and it's happening in this earth. It is reflecting the energies that are going on in 5D and what is being shifted. Um, you cannot have light without darkness. And that's, I just watched this movie with my kids the other night, Legend. And I liked the beginning of the movie. It had a bunch of words and it was like, you know, you cannot have light without darkness. Wherever you see light, darkness must exist, must exist. And wherever you see darkness, there will be light because without either, you can't really know. But I thought about that for a minute. I said, now, wait a minute. Without light, there's darkness. Because darkness is darkness, period. You need light to even, you know, notice anything. So I thought the only thing that's coming into darkness is light. This is like a new healing energy. It's more powerful. It scares away the dark. The only thing that can scare away the dark is the light. But you can't see the light without the darkness. But in darkness, you can't see anything at all. So I was thinking of the full card. Um, I was thinking of illusions and consciousness. I was thinking of subconscious and consciousness. I was thinking of going into one realm into the other. And I think what's happening here is someone's been stuck in a darkness and now light is going to come inside and the darkness will scatter like rats to a flame or you know what I mean. Um, anyways, that's what I was thinking of. I hope that made sense. I just feel like darkness will always be there, but light has to be kept up by love. Light has to be kept up by a vibration of goodness. Otherwise, darkness will take over. So it is a fight of good and evil. It is a fight of um, spirituality, of principalities, not of flesh and blood. Okay, it's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual battle. Um, in some cases, people may even have a little witchcraft going on here. Uh, you know, so it's more than that. They're battling witchcraft or they're battling spirits and possibly witchcraft. You could be battling a really dark karmic partner. I mean, it's quite possible for some people. Not everyone, certainly not everyone, but some. This is a very spiritual war battle that's going on though, for sure. Uh, but I wouldn't worry because the end is here. All right, so let's see what else is going on. Wow, we have the five of swords. Uh, this is a very toxic, negative energy. This is fights, bad blood. This is Marcel, okay, and the originals. Um, this is from the movie, the, the series, The Originals. And this family is very toxic. They have a lot of bad blood. They're always stabbing each other in the heart, locking each other's in coffins. Um, they don't trust each other. They don't trust each other as far as they can throw each other. Um, just dishonesty and fights and quarreling and battles all the time. And they love each other. They do have feelings, but they don't know how to show it. 
So I feel like what's going on with these bottled up emotions is they don't trust each other. In the karmic relationship, there's zero trust. They wouldn't trust this person to go to the corner store. They wouldn't trust this person to do anything behind their back. And if they allow them to leave their energy, their presence, they're sitting there like, fine, go ahead. I don't trust you. I, I And they know it. They're staying in a relationship and they know there's no trust. None. None. And just like Cindy G, the mouth from the south, this relationship was built on what? Legos. It's coming down. The foundation is toxic at the very best. The very best. A lot of people say, well, how could it be toxic? What if they're married and they have children? That's a facade. That's what I've been talking about. I was married and had children and there was abuse and there was drinking and there was sadness and there was depression and there was arguments. Just because someone's married and has kids doesn't automatically give them a stamp of a happy life. I've known people that are married and, and one's a therapist and one's a doctor or one's, you know, some CEO of some company. And they, you know, they look like a happy family on Facebook. They have beautiful family pictures and matching outfits and um, vacations. And deep down in the side, the roots of their home lies mistrust, dishonesty, disloyalty lies cheating, secrets, deceptions, escapism, lack of intimacy, lack of trust, lack of love. Again, foundation built on Legos. So it doesn't matter what the package looks like, what's inside the package. And that's what we're revealing here. It's toxic. Um, let's see what else is going on. This would be the desires and challenges. So high priestess, divine secrets, Okay, so there are some karmic partners out there that could be using magic, could be using some kind of a spiritual energy to lock up and keep that person hostage. This is for like 1%. This is not a main message. But there are some of them that are trying to do that to the best of their ability to keep that person chained and, and stuck with them, even though they know that this is a toxic relationship. For others, the desires are to stay quiet and which is the challenge because they're not being quiet are they five of swords is using that mouth so they wish they could just stay quiet keep the secrets but they can't they wish they could just keep quiet because they know the truth but every time they get triggered here comes the fight every time they feel the energy of sneakiness deceit deception insecurities it bubbles up like poison and they can't stay quiet. They know that they know that they know in their innermost secrets and desires in their heart, you're a liar, you're a cheater, you're deceptive. You don't want to be here. So because they know that, it's extremely difficult to stay quiet. It's extremely difficult. Could you imagine having to bite your tongue and be quiet when your person comes back from a business trip or from the store or from a night out with friends and you know that they were calling someone else, you know that they saw someone else, or at least you feel that you, you fear, you fear that they were because of the past. It's like you can't escape from the past. And this could very well be what this means. They're trying to run and escape from the truth, the past that haunts them the truth that there's always been someone else, the truth that this person doesn't want to be there, the truth that you're both not happy, the truth that it's over, and they're just trying to run and escape, get away from that, like running from a, a horror movie uh, villain. They're just trying to run. They're trying to run from Freddy. They're running. They're running from Jason. They're running from Freddy. They're running from Chucky. They're running. They're escaping what is inevitably coming. And just like the movie Scream, you have to face your whore villain. You have to face that person. Even like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you have to face them. You have to face that villain. Um, it's only a matter of time. You might as well deal with it now. 
Why are you waiting? Okay, let's see what else is happening. Three swords. Heartache. Pain. We already knew they felt heartache. Where is it? My karmic situation is ending. I was in denial. I'm feeling heartache. This is the three swords. They're hurting, guys. It's not easy. This is a very difficult feeling. It hurts to know the truth. But the outcome is a broken heart. This is the outcome. This is what Spirit sees happening. It's knowing that there's this third party out there somewhere and they're going to have to let go and let their person be with them. And they know it because the high priestess knows it. They know it. And it just stings. And they're frustrated. And they're a little bit fearful that they actually have to let go. Oh my gosh. This is third party. It's like three swords. But it's my third party card. This is from my deck. So extremely painful. Look how they're hanging on to the rose. They're bleeding. They're hanging on to a rose that isn't even bloomed. It's a bud. Which to me means it's a dud. <laughs> it's a bud and it's a dud. They're hanging on to a relationship that never reached full bloom. That person that they love's heart is never going to be theirs. That person that they're in a relationship is never going to be completely raw, open, vulnerable, honest, and true with them. They know that as long as they're in this relationship, the toxic patterns and the heartache is going to be there from the truth of knowing that their body may be there with you, but their spirit, their energy, their essence is somewhere else. And that's just the truth of it. The next one is, yeah, a knowing five of pentacles. So see, they're desiring to hang on, but it hurts. And the outcome is plain as black and white. Dark night of the soul, left out in the cold, five of pentacles, it's over. It's the most depressing rejection you could feel. And that's what the karmics feel. The most depressing rejection possible. Now, some people say, Stephanie, how do I know I'm the divine or the karmic? I'm going through a breakup right now. I'm feeling rejected right now. Does that make me the karmic? I've said this before in many videos, but if you're new, welcome. Let me explain quickly. If you have had all the signs and synchronicities and confirmations that you are in a soulmate, divinely orchestrated relationship, that you feel your other partner's energy, you feel nothing but love and unconditional love for that person. You're forgiving, loving, nurturing. If you want to send love and nurturing to the karmic and you want the best and highest good for everyone and you're the one hurt in the crossfire and you're the one left out in the cold, that's a separate story. You're also in these energies. But you don't have a lot of the devil and seven of swords. Um, and bottled up emotions in a divine reading. In a divine reading, you do have the five of pentacles, three of swords, third party, pain, death. You know, you do have that because it's crushing to know that the divine partner is being scorned and put aside for this toxic karmic relationship. So don't get confused on the readings. You're both very similar. You both have karmas and lessons you're going through and learning from and you have to get over but this particular relationship of a karmic relationship involves two people that know the end is here. Permanent. There's no everlasting love. There's no unconditional love. I'll see you in the next lifetime. There's no I love you unconditionally and, and I'm here to heal you and love you to the best and highest good of my ability. The karmic relationship knows that there's no real love here. They know that it's built on Legos, that this is a faulty foundation and it's not going to last. They know that it was created in darkness, not light. There's quite a big difference. A beautiful divine relationship is created in the light, in the goodness, in the grace and the mercy and the love. Um, karmic lessons are meant to deal with your shadow side, to deal with the toxic patterns, to deal with things that hurt you, trigger you, make you feel less than. You have to experience the dark to appreciate the light. Am I right? You have to. You have to experience this bad, toxic, terrible energy 
So when you get into a loving energy, you can appreciate that and love that and nurture that. But if no one experiences this, they're not going to succeed in a divine relationship. So I can fix this camera. Whoop. Okay. Let's see if that's better, guys. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so let's see what else is going on. Oh boy. Ticking time bomb. I mean, can it get any more real? This relationship is ready to explode, like I said, like a volcano, like lava. Tick, 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 tick. I mean, I can almost hear the clock just, oh, seriously, it's a ticking time bomb. This is ready to blow. How many times are we gonna bottle these things up? How many times are we gonna hide the storm inside? How many times are we gonna deal with this toxic soul torment? How many times are we gonna suffer in silence? Not very many, I can tell you that, because someone is doing the work, self-reflection. Someone is seeing this for what it really is. And to be honest, on the divine side, they have been running from the truth. It's been terrifying. Can you blame them? It's been, it's been scary. It's been terrifying. But they are looking within. They are seeing this is a lie. This is over. This is toxic. Hello? They're feeling restless and anxious and hand, they're seeing their toxic patterns. Seriously. How much more real can it get? Don't tell me they're not self-reflecting. Don't tell me they're not healing and it's painful. These were messages from the person who's in this. They know death and, um, well, death and the tower. They know that their karmic situation is ending, period. I'm sorry I hurt you. They're sorry. They were in denial, completely disillusioned, maybe even entr entranced, tempted. They had temptation, be it money, be it comfort, be it drugs, be it sex, be it an illusion of falsehood, a beautiful life that everyone respects. Remember those, those things I told you about Jesus in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Remember that. Let's keep going. Five of cups, ending result. We have five of pentacles, now we have five of cups. I'm sorry, but it's over. It's over. It's just, you know, we're, we're gonna have to heal and grow. We can't cry over spilled milk. Um, this is all a very painful energy here for the, for the karmic partner. It's extremely painful. It's very hard to deal with. It's hard for your person in the karmic relationship to deal with, but the truth is coming to the light. We have Ten of Swords. Yeah, this is the end. Self-torment over. Ten of Swords. No more Seven of Swords, Five of Swords, Three of Swords. Look at that. That almost makes a triangle. Okay? This is over. The Ten marks New Beginnings, also Endings. And they were in the Iron Maiden. They chose to be here in this torment chamber. And they've been there for a while, hurting, aching, in toxicity, bottling up all their tears and emotions, feeling trapped by the devil, feeling trapped by fear, feeling trapped by karma, unable to escape. And spirit keeps knocking and knocking. Stop running from me. Stop running from me. Deal with this. Deal with your past. Deal with your abuse. Deal with your addictions. Deal with this karmic relationship. See your toxic patterns. See why you're here in this karmic relationship. See why. See if it's money. See if it's sex. See if it's falsehood. See if it's whatever. Whatever fake baloney it is, you need to see. It's time to escape and leave. You have to go. Three of Cups. I love it. That's happy times, reconciliations, um, rejoicing. This is a good time. I feel like in three months, this relationship is going to definitely be over. Within three months, this particular karmic relationship will be over. And like I said, I see a lot of Capricorn and Scorpio, uh, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. I also see Pisces and Cancer. Okay? Those are the signs I see. Um, but this relationship is going to end. I mean, it's a ticking time bomb. It's a matter of time. It's already been foreseen. 
that the karmic situation is ending. Okay? It's already been seen in the cards. They're seeing their toxic patterns and my karmic situation is ending. It's a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Um, I do feel with the Three of Cups uh, that it, they're going to feel relieved and happy. Because remember, the Three of Cups is happy. It's joyful. It's reconciliation, good times, birth announcements, happiness, marriage announcements, good times, freedom. It's just love, happiness, feeling free, feeling one with family, getting back together with those you love. Reconciliations with the divine is what I feel. This is ending. It's over. And when it's over, they're going to feel really good. Really, really good. Um, let's go ahead and clarify a little bit. Let's clarify some of this tower. Oh, there it is. Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. They're leaving that relationship behind. It's over. Goodbye. Eight of Cups. Scorpio again. Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. Definitely dealing with the Scorpio. They are leaving Seven of Swords, the toxic situation. Bottom of the deck is divorce. If someone's married, they're getting a divorce. They're separating. They're done. They're not staying in it. Period. I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't overstress yourself. This is just something that is going to happen. It's in the cards. Uh, it's, it's probably in your astrology chart. There's a karmic relationship that the relationship's down the toilet. And you know it. So clarifying death and the tower. It's just the ending and the dissolving of a, cur a current commitment. Um, the next card under that is determined. Even though someone here is extremely determined. Could be a Capricorn. Extremely determined to stay stuck in this relationship. They're not going to get their way. They're not going to get what they want. Even Jack Sparrow had his day. Okay, Jack Sparrow had his day. Under that we have... Um, broken karmic cycles. That's it. The chains are broken. And where's the chains from? The devil card. Feeling stuck. Feeling addicted. Feeling trapped. Those chains are broken. There's escapism going on. Someone's leaving the situation. Here's the full card. Leap of faith. Jumping into something new. Going into a new relationship. Going into a new life. Going into a new state of mind. Paradigm shift. This person is jumping over this cliff, diving straight down into another dimension in another world. 180. Someone is leaving a current situation. Period. Fresh start. Aries is definitely possible here. We have Queen of Wands just verifying that. There could be a, a Leo or an Aries energy. Um, and even a Saggy. She's got the bone arrow here. They're either going towards a fire sign or they have fire in their chart. Okay, going towards. They, they feel fiery and determined and passionate to get out of this situation, make a huge change for the better, and just better their lives forever, better their lives for good. Be done with toxicity. Be done with this karmic relationship. The hermit card is here. Journey into self. So again, that self-reflection energy. They're looking within to see the truth, looking within what's within the star, hope. There probably was no hope. Somebody here was completely hopeless, not sure they could get out of the situation, not sure if they should stay stuck or leave or what they should do. And here it is. They're learning that there's hope inside themselves. There's healing inside themselves. There's another life. They don't have to stay here. And um, the Hermit's Major Arcana, very loud, like Major Arcana, Major Arcana, Major Arcana, Major Arcana, Major Arcana. You know, that's a lot. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Five. And we have how many fives? One, two, three. And good things come in threes, do they not? Does spiritual things come in threes? Yes, they do. Um, everything good happens in threes, or even everything happens in threes. There's a divine change, and we have three fives. We have the three of swords and three of months, three cups. Something about the three. There's going to be change within three months. Mark my words in this relationship. Underneath that, we have the page of swords. 
So someone is really wondering, should I reach out? Should I text? Should I call? Should I say something? Should I do something? Do I need to reach out? Will this person trust me? They're back and forth in their head. Gemini energy. I have a choice to make. Should I reach my person? Should I reach my divine person? Should I stay? Should I go? What can I do? What should I do? I'm very torn. They're leaving this person regardless. They're just wondering, should I reach out to go message this other person that I left behind in the past? Somebody was left behind in the past. They're tortured. Nine of Swords. Soul torment. This is nightmares. Sleepless nights. Anxiety. Pain. Remorse. Okay? Regret. Very painful. Very, very painful. They desire passion. Love. Romance. They're not getting it where they're at. They want this with their partner and they're fantasizing. They're fantasizing and desiring a happy, romantic, intimate life. King of Swords, they're looking into the future. They want to see what's out there. They want to see who's out there, what's out there, what's out there for me. Am I going to get to see this person again? Are we going to talk again? They're even a little conniving. They're trying to plot. They're trying to plot and see what's going to happen in this relationship. They want to know if you're going to stand up for them and take them back. They want to know that if, if you're going to accept the truth that they're going to say to you. They want to know, are you going to stay quiet forever? Because Ten of Swords and the High Priestess, I'm sorry, someone's blocked and blocked emotions. Someone has blocked email, blocked phone numbers, blocked contact. So they're worried. Am I even going to be welcome leaving the situation to go somewhere else? Let's see what's going on. First card wants to pinch out. We have Father of Cups, Scorpio Energy again. The other card that wanted to pop out was, what is this? Six, wait, Six of Cups. They miss you. They want to reconnect with you. They want to reconnect with their lover. Um, and then we have the Seven of Pentacles. They're looking back. They're not happy with the choice they made, guys. They regret it. They regret going to the karmic. They regret going to the karmic. They regret it. They regret everything about it. Yep, seven of swords. Look at that, seven, seven, seven. They're being sly, foxy, conniving, secretive. They're tired of hiding that from you. They don't want to. They don't want to keep hiding it. Believe me. And then we have here the hanged man. They're just waiting for the right time. Waiting for the right time to speak up, to say something towards you. Because look at that, three swords, but it's in reverse. They're trying to heal their broken heart. They're trying to make amends. They're trying to come back from a toxic situation with you and recover what you guys lost. They want to fix it. They want to fix it. They want to come out of this. But I think they have a lot of regrets of some things that they may have said to you that may have set you off or hurt you in some way. And another seven, seven of wands. But this is like a light being shown in the dark. And remember I said there's, there's uh, no light without darkness. They've learned their lesson. They know that by rejecting you, rejecting the situation as much as they did, they had to learn. And here's the Ten of Swords again. Could be a Taurus involved. A Taurus could have been hurt. But they're done. Game over. Game over. Ten of Swords, they're done. Here's the Devil card. They're done with what? Oh, the Devil card. Devil, Devil, strong Capricorn energy here. They're done with the toxicity, the secrets, and the lies. They're done with being chained and stuck and out of control. Toxic patterns, guys, are being revealed. They don't want to be in that energy anymore. Bottom of the deck, I'll leave it there, is Four of Cups. The rat that comes to steal people's happiness. Okay, they're not happy, they're not satisfied in the relationship, they're done. They're done with that kind of energy. They want a happy life and they don't want to stay stuck in this. I'm going to get one oracle because I'm running out of time with this recording. Um, but I'm going to pull a surrender card. What are they going to surrender? Okay, and then I'll do a, a little happy outcome card. Let's see. What is the person in the masculine relationship going to surrender? Well, that came out quick. Surrender to stress. Okay, surrender to the stress. And I think a lot of Ten of Swords, yeah, they're very stressed. Um, take a few deep breaths and exhale. The tension you've built in your body is like a cancer. Let the stress go as you come back to your center. <sighs> They're letting go of the stress. They can't fix what happened. They just want to move on and move forward. Okay, let's get an outcome card. Let's 
Give me an outcome, please, for those who are in a karmic relationship. Look at this, guys. You're never going to believe this. The card that fell out is renovation. We got this in yesterday's reading. They're going to a fire sign, period. Leo, Saggy, Aries, or maybe they have fire in their chart, but they're going home. We have strategy, and look, there's fire on the board, bottom of the deck. They are strategizing with a fire sign or to a fire sign, or they've got fire. They are strategizing like a chessboard how to get out of this karmic situation and go back home to who they really want, to who they really desire. They're figuring it out. That is that King of Swords energy. Wherever I had him, I had him a minute ago. You saw it. King of Swords is out here. They are figuring it out. They're going to get out of the situation, period. Um, and I will read Renovation. Actually, I feel like I should read Strategy. I'll see what kind of comes up first. Burn away the old to make way for the new. Before planting a new crop, farmers burn their fields to clear weeds and residue to prepare for new growth. Similarly, before we build something new, we must destroy what's been destroyed. I'm sorry, deteriorated. Renovation depends on clearing out the wreckage. First, we take stock of to see what we have. If anything is worth saving, and that's that seven of pentacles right here, taking stock to see if they have anything worth saving. But the tower and the death say no. Then it says, then we demolish and throw out the junk with the tower to process the dismantling and rearranging. It can be exhausting unless we bring a playful humor to it. A forest after, after fire looks desolate. Through some, though some trees depend on heat to open their cones, a hardship such as a failed business or an accident we didn't cause or a painful divorce. Wow, we have a divorce card. Or a painful divorce comes to the surface. These are changes. These things must happen. It feels like we got burned. Yet once we come out the other side, New seeds open us up to the new dire circumstances in need. The bankrupt entrepreneur changes tax tactics and succeeds. The divorced person seeks help and feels more free than ever and discovers their life purpose. The injured pedestrian discovers a new rejuvenating power of yoga. A single parent finds a more appropriate mate for their family. Our values transform. We are free and clear to rebuild our lives in a new direction that we choose if we are willing to change and adapt to the renovating of our livelihood, our physical fitness and ability to love. We rejuvenate our joy and bring it back into life. The element of this card is fire. The number of this card is number one. The acceptance of this card is burning down the house. The phase of this card is an ending. I don't think it can get better for this karmic situation. I mean, honestly, it's just over, it's ending. Um, and I'll read strategy because that was at the bottom. Okay. Um, set your course, brainstorm, and go. Great achievements start with a plan. Sketch it out, all the possibilities. See an optimal solution. See lots of solutions. See them, plan them out, visualize what you want. Manifest and then harness your mind towards this accomplishment. Set out to start your goal by visualizing it. Hard decisions are a part of life. We plot our course and advance or else we will be stonewalled. It's through potentially dangerous situations that are major roadblocks in life alone that make us more powerful in our strategies. Once we see that we have failed many times, we know how to win. When we realize that sometimes it's good to retreat and sometimes it's good to attack, we persevere and we rechart our path and our circumstances will change. Planning is a great way to overcome procrastination and finding a way over life's complex hurdles. Combined with resourcefulness and improvis improvisation and exhaustion, we overcome all obstacles. The artwork of this card talks about stonewalled. The element of this card is air. So all the air signs and fire signs prominent masculine energy. The number of this card is six, balance. The phase of this card is growth. 
So there you go, guys. There's your karmic reading. They're getting out of it. I'm just going to leave it there. They're seeing their toxic patterns. They're restless and they're anxious over you. They feel heartache. Okay, they feel it. They know it. They're healing and it's painful. Their karmic situation is ending. Difficult times, guys. Difficult times. They're sorry they hurt you. They were in denial. You have to give them that. You have to give them that. Um, spirit is helping them, point blank. And that's why the towers are here. Anyways, keep your head up, guys. If you're in a karmic situation, my sympathies for you. You're going to get through this. Let the towers fall as they may. Let death end what may. Don't push something and control it um, against the will of the universe. If you sense that something is needing to fall apart, let it fall apart so something better can fall together. Okay? It's time for a renovation of your life. Notice your toxic patterns. Let them go. Allow your person to do the same if you're cross-watching. And remember, above all, this is a journey. It's never a destination or a stopping point. So just keep swimming, guys. Thank you for watching my channel. Please remember to like and subscribe. I love you all with my heart. Bye-bye.